Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a massive, massive, massive live stream for you. All right now, yeah, that's right. It's Dave, the big boy video journalist, coming to you from the uh, worldwide studios here in the very noble state of Tennessee. And I've got your comments pulled up on the live stream. I'm going to be going over your thoughts. And wow, what a piece of document we have for you right now. I'm hesitant to say who shared this with me. I don't think they want credit, but we had somebody running to the court in Maricopa County and receiving this here document, uh, which we are going to share with you guys. Absolutely wild, wild stuff. Um, let me try to find it. Uh, okay, I, I, got a, I got a lot of uh, things popping up, so just give me a second here as we are running this. Hit the like button. Uh, I could be wrong, but it looks like we have a new date that is the date Jane Doe is using for when uh, the, uh, the, the babies no longer existed. This is going to be full of trigger warnings, guys. If this one isn't for you, I understand. But we are full of trigger warnings here as we discuss what the heck is going on here with this filing. I'm going to get into it. Again, I want to shout out everyone in the community who has been supporting us. The Dave's Big Boy Restaurant. Uh, we've got all of your different uh, AI generated. I know it looks real, but that's me serving you the tea. And to everyone in the Patreon sharing uh, their Justice for Clayton, uh, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, it, uh, different. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All the, someone, here's a pretty blonde, a Justice for Clayton waiting by the pond scum, patiently with a big boy beverage, as we do. Extra large cup of Bustello in hand and ready to go, says Becca. Everyone, let me know, where are you tuning in from, please? I'm going to do this live stream till 6 p.m. Central Time, in which, in solidarity with those who come before me, namely that umbrella guy, I am going to be shifting the live stream over to him. Uh, so as soon as my live stream ends... It will introduce you to the Umbrella Guy. You guys already know him and you love him. And he's going to be doing a live stream with Megan Fox. I will also be in that live stream, at least for a segment of time. Craziest filings ever? Probably. So that's at 6 central time in half an hour. Shall we dive into it? And again, if you're watching my live stream, you might get a little bit of repeat coverage on their live stream. But that's okay because it's less about what's on paper and more about the response from the professionals. And of course, I know uh, I'm very um, I'm very new to this game. Response, objection to petitioner's motion to compel lunch and for alternative relief. Let's get into this. And again, big, big, big trigger warnings. All right, New Jersey, Nebraska, Asheville, Washington State, Ontario, Everett, Washington, Duluth, Ontario, Canada. Everybody in the house, Chicago representing Mission Viejo. Oh, Mission Viejo, we're going to hear from you in these proceedings. All right, let's get into it. And again, this is just a teaser. Megan Fox, Umbrella, and myself will be live. Well, maybe even, um, will we have legal vices there? I'm, I don't think she's on the list here, but maybe. All right, let's get into it. Respondent, Clayton Eckerd, buy-in through counsel, undersigned, hereby objects. In response to petitioner's motion to compel lunch and for alternative relief filed April 8th, 2024. As in for his response, respondent states as following. Maybe this was meant as a joke, but in the context of the other communications from petitioner, bar complaints, more threats of bar complaints, threats of lawsuits, hinting at lawsuits against journalists and allegations of things, it is inappropriate. Parenthetically, the case law cited by petitioner is factually distinct from this manner where petitioner continues to evade compliance with basic disclosure. To be clear, respondent does not object to the notion of lunch with petitioner's counsel. However, as repeatedly expressed to petitioner, respondent will not engage in lunch without the compelled disclosure and in light of the nature of petitioner's communications without a neutral third party present. Ah, well, I don't know if I count as neutral third party, but I'm always down for lunch. 
Depends what we're doing. If we're doing one of those steak lunches, no. I want a nice sweaty sandwich. I want one of those soggy sandwiches that's got some of that special sauce. Yeah, by special sauce, I mean the Mac sauce. Not where you get your head out of the gutter. As detailed in an email to Petitioner's Council on April Fool's Day, 2024. As for lunch, I enjoy food. In my 24 years of practice, I have never said no to a lunch or beer invitation, but I'm saying not now. Oh, rejected! Wouldn't it plan hard to get? Oh, boy. Oh, Woody. You want him? You're not going to win him over a lunch. You need to give him prime time dinner. Perhaps this will be nothing more than fodder for a future blog, po- <laughs> blog post, but I trust you are being sincere. Your statements and emails over the phone, on your blog, on your Twitter, et cetera, may have been the product of passion, but they were received as combative and unpleasant. Given your verbiage and your approach online and to my team, I think Judge Mata will side with me on any trepidation issues here. That said, I am quick to forgive, and if your email is meant to be an olive branch apology, for the professional allegations in overzealous advocacy, I would certainly accept that apology. Oh boy, you could tell Woodnick's been through marriage counseling. You know what I mean? He knows. He goes, Look, you might have intended for this to be a passion project, but I took it as kind of an F you. That's how I took it. All right. Hey, Legal Vice is in the chat. Legal Vice is in the chat. Good to see you, my guy. I feel so, I feel so uh, proud and under pressure to not mess up any of these words. As further provided to Petitioner's Council on April 4th, 2024. While I appreciate your right to speak on all issues, I am deeply uncomfortable with the tone you are using in emails to my office on Twitter and on Twitter and in your blog. Comments like, I am the Conor McGregor of litigation. I am the Conor McGregor of litigation. <laughs> Can't really do that accent. And I look forward to reading their obituaries. Really invoke something extremely unpleasant. Hey, I think that's in reference to me. Using the term special ed in a derogatory way is also not something I am comfortable with as a lawyer and parent. I, and again, not, not to say it's right, but her lawyer admitted that it was wrong and did apologize and did delete. But either way, it's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> These aren't a seventh graders learning not to say certain words. Bruce has, says the wine tasting is ongoing. Little to no um, uh, tannins found in Bruce's wine. I have never tweeted in my life, <laughs> says Woodnick. There are certainly passionate followers of this case. Hey, raise your hand and shake your nuts. Who's out there? Oh, my God. Oh, hold on, wrong one. Who's out there? Give it to me, folks. Where are my passionate nut jobs? Hold on, we're clicking on it. Hold on, one more tab. There it is. All right, we're warming up. There are passionate followers of this case from Bachelor Nation due to your client bringing the matter to the world's attention. That said, I was forwarded some of the postings over the past few days as well as your recent blog post, and I'm just not sure why you are engaging with them. We don't. I am also not certain why you are publishing court documents in your client's personal medical records contrary to court order. Lunch does not fix the fact that the petitioner has failed to provide disclosure notwithstanding the granted motion to compel. These antics have delayed the work of both medical and forensic expert reports as the experts are waiting for the alleged twin fetus pictures. Again, trigger warning. Records between petitioner and Sister Doe. Hey, Sister Doe, Sister. Hey, Sister Doe, Sister. On the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on the date of the alleged miscarriage in the alleged, hey, honey, can you give me a diet, Dr. Pepper, with a cup of ice? A diet, Dr. Pepper, with a cup of ice? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tasha Courtney. These records were specifically, I don't yell at her. She knows we're busy. These records were specifically confirmed to be in the possession of petitioner's counsel when he stated, Greg, that is not going to be a problem. You're going to love the image dates because the images are dating July 23rd, 2023. Okay, I had the wrong date. I said June. I said June. I meant July. We'll switch that up right now. In fact, as we cover this right now, we're going to switch this up live and on the spot. Uh, my thumbnail says July 2023. Hold on one second, guys. I want to make sure I don't have any wrong information. I accidentally said June, but I wanted to say July. So 
We are finding out live in the spot that there is an actual... Now, hold on a second. Just give me a, give me one second to update this, folks. We're finding out live in the moment that there is a discrepancy with the date in which Janeth Dodo Bird III told, Hey, sister, do sister, the day that she miscarried. Now, at first, we find out in January she miscarries. And then in January, we find out that the actual date must have been before November. She says September or October. Now we're finding out that date is actually July 2023. You want to come into the chat real quick? You don't want to say hi? Oh, you're all dressed up. You're all dressed up. Come, 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 come. Tasha, everybody. Tasha, Tasha. We have 830 people here. Just wow. come say hi. Have a seat. Come on, join us. Okay. Wow. Um, there it is. Nice and slow. What were you up to today, honey? Um, I don't know. Nothing. You smell good. Thanks. Why do you smell good? Because I sprayed a new YSL cologne on. Oh, Evs Saint Laurent. It's actually a mint, so it's, you can use it. Oh, that's your excuse? Are you? Oh, you're kicking. Did you feel that? We got some... Uh, some participation happening in, the, <laughs> in Tasha's chat room. Well, I don't want to keep you. I'm just reading through this until six. I figured maybe we could go watch that new Conor McGregor movie on Amazon tonight. Which one? Conor McGregor. That, uh, that, um, that boxing movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's supposed to be good. Really? Yeah. Okay. We can watch two men that are in great shape <laughs> as we eat potatoes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Tasha Marie Courtney, the famous, the famous Tasha. All right. Let's keep it going, folks. I uh, just used that time. Thank you for the soda. We're stocked up on soda. We're ready to keep talking. So, Stir Crazy says you look gorgeous, honey. I tend to agree. Let's go back into this. Wild things happening. So, he says you're going to love the images dated July 23rd, 2023. July, petitioner testified in two related protective order proceedings at our deposition in March. As detailed, so here it is, March 29th, 2024, giving us the picture and time stamp for our forensic technology expert, Brian Neumeister. Now, Brian Neumeister is the forensic tech expert, I believe, who testified in the Johnny Depp case. This guy is an expert. When there is already admissions of records fraud in a trial in two months, it's also not something that requires delay. As we said before, we will address the photo if it is complemented by the alleged verifiable metadata and medical records. Jane claimed she deleted the picture from her iPhone, claimed her sister deleted too, but also claimed she sent it to the telemed provider. There should be a very clear digital footprint for Neumeister and a picture of a picture is not going to cut it in light of the history and her testimony. We're also awaiting the original sonogram she claimed she got anonymous, anonymously from Planned Parenthood which has affirmed it does not offer anonymous appointments, and that is uh, an easily accessible patient portal. This was a sonogram she ordered, she admitted she doctored, and that is the core of our motion for relief under the order of protection case. Wild stuff. So I'm getting text messages from people. The flock pointed out images. These image dates are before her appointment with Doctor McCool. What is going on? What is going on? When you speak with redacted and redacted, they will confirm the fabricated documents. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that might be previous men. They will confirm the fabricated documents and fake pregnancy allegations were happening back in 2014. Oh, oh, well, we just received a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. K J Y W for this $10 super chat. Again, we're going to be going live for 20 more minutes. And then as soon as my live's over, it's going to shuffle everybody over to the umbrella guy. So they're now bringing up the fact that there are fabricated documents from 2014. Since you saw she blamed Greg Gillespie for the other ultrasounds that came from her email address and phone numbers and emails and texts, as will be verified by Newmeister, she should be reminded that she did not even know Greg existed back in 2014 when she first claimed to be first pregnant, fake pregnant. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow. So they're saying she was doing this in 2014. She wants to blame Greg Gillespie for everything. He didn't even know her back then. Well, maybe Greg Gillespie didn't know her, but maybe he still did it. Maybe Greg still did it. 
Wow. Unbelievable stuff. We're on page four, folks. Wow. Perhaps, in addition to trying to cajole, 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 a trial continuance, the missing disclosure has not been provided because it contains more fabricated records. Instead of acknowledging that she lied to this court. Hold on. Hold on. Instead of acknowledging that she lied to this court, petitioner has ostensibly dialed up her Photoshop skills. Shay Stearns with a $2 super chat. Justice, Mike Drop. Thank you so much, Shay. Much appreciated. Uh, that will go towards the diaper fund. Not for my baby, but for me, because this court case is making me shit myself. Okay, folks. Uh, that's right, Teresa. She lied. Um, Bruce says, I'm so lost, but in shock. Um that's that. That'll do it to you. Instead of acknowledging that she lied, uh, she insisted on deposing uh, Clayty in February, video recorded, and allowed her series of since withdrawn attorneys, Bonnie Platter, Alexi Lindvall, and Corey Keith, to unwittingly use a sonographic exhibit that she since has admitted to doctoring. That's right. Uh, by the way, people are saying they are streaming this on their televisions. Hello, everyone out there on your TV. Good to see you. Hit the like button. I know you can't do it with your TV. Just throw your clicker at the TV. That'll help. Uh, this is the same fake sonogram she flaunted, claiming she was pregnant with Eckerd's twins after showing up to court before a judge's duty. Can't make it up. And Gil gets this with an ostensibly fake pregnant stomach claiming she was 100% pregnant and due with twins on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2024. This is not just a faked sonogram that was used in court proceedings, but petitioner testified in the collateral protective order proceedings that her OBGYNs were Dr. McCool and that she was seen last Friday. Well, she was seen in the sense that she sought treatment and that she went and walked through the doors. That's how she was seen. There are no records that support these statements by petitioner and little to no uh, medical records confirm that they never treated petitioner for pregnancy. Now, contrary to the confounding responses to this court's direct questioning at the last status conference in her own medical records, her public postings seem to range to claiming her alleged miscarriage to either took place in July or even as late as November 2023. Which one is it? And if you're wondering, this diet Dr. Pepper is hitting real good. Lady Kane, Texas, with the largest super chat of the day, $20. She lied. Great job, Neil. Thanks for your coverage. Then vengeance in my veins wants justice for Clayton for sure. Unbelievable. She's taken it this far. She lied? Well, thank you for that $20 super chat. That is going to go handedly uh, in uh, my wife's guacamole fund. Uh, let's continue. And again, we're only going to be here for another 15 minutes, so enjoy this party while it lasts. Um, someone said, Dave's better. Dave better be proud of himself. I'm streaming this on my TV. We appreciate it. Take your photo. Share it on Instagram. We're doing it, folks. Um, so people are wondering, July 23rd, is that even possible? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You guys are really coming through. Catherine with a $3 super chat. Thank you so much, Catherine, uh, for the demonetization fund. Yes, that's right. Our largest video of the month was demonetized this morning. Don Lee with $5. Make a myth take and find out. You rock, Dave. Thank you so much for that super chat. And also, Trisha with $10. Thank you so much. She says, thank you. No, I say thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Oh, while Petitioner appears to have recently toned down her social media posts, her newest counsel has backfilled that void. <laughs> her newest counsel, hold on. Oh, Jesus. Are you kidding me with this? You just can't. Ladies and gentlemen, you just can't. It's wild out there, folks. What are we doing? Is this Looney Tunes or what? Oh, my gosh. So hold on. We need, we need more. Okay, here it is. 
Um, while Petitioner appears to have recently toned down her social media posts, her newest counsel has backfilled that void. Bring it on back. Bring it. Tone it up. With persistent Twitter and blog posts and outlines his theory of the case, including his anticipated motions and more. See generally postings by Petitioner's counsel exhibit two, a sample of these postings below. Uh, there it is. Um... I'm the Connor McGregor of litigation. Tons of family law. I don't list those because they're boring. Clayton's lawyer has handled two federal cases. So what we have here is a bow tie measuring contest amongst the uh, the lawyers, and then also f these six selfish lying a holes. Blah blah blah. Vile scum. Of course, scum, scum, pond scum unite. And of course, he says. Um, uh, and again, this was all deleted. I look forward to reading their obituaries briefly before throwing them in the trash where they belong. I'm not one to, I am not one to demand apologies. I'm not. People can do what they want. Oh, Denise, and congratulations to Denise. Got a new job after weeks of submitting. We're very happy for, everyone, everyone in the chat, say congrats and good luck to Denise at the new job. Says, thanks for bringing the tea. Everyone support this pond scum journalist and send in those super chats before 6 p.m. Oh, Denise, you're too kind. Alex said, $20. Thank you for everything you've done on this case. Anyone else would have called it a day long ago, but you're still going. Oh, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate that. Tracy with $10 because your first excellent video today got demonetized and our big boy needs to buy diapers. <laughs> Stir Crazy said $20. Oh my gosh, you guys are really flooring me. Thank you for all the hard work and endless hours, Dave. Oh my gosh, Super Chat $5. 71 pages of Kiss My Butt is a level of petty I can get behind. Jen with $10 Super Chat because Pond Scum needs guacamole, diapers, and most importantly, breadsticks. Hugs to gorgeous Tasha. Sarah with a $5 super chat. Okay, so she now claims she had a miscarriage before she filed lawsuit in August. Yeah, that's the big thing, huh? And again, again, we have to remember her attorney. And who knows? Maybe maybe, maybe they, he misspoke on these dates. I, I truthfully don't know. Her attorney is claiming that she has proof that she miscarried in July. What he said to me he was like, all she has to do to prove defamation is that she thought she was pregnant or not prove defamation, but all she had to do was think she was pregnant in August. Well, how could she have evidence of a miscarriage? I think, I think what he's trying to argue is that she has photos of this sort of bloody discharge and also still believes she was still pregnant. I think that's what the argument is. Colorado Canadian with a $5 super chat. Breadstick money, baby. Take that, Mr. D. Canoe Esquire. Mic drop indeed. Thank you so much. Did I get everybody? Linda, did I get you? Oh, thank you so much, Linda, and everybody else. Truly appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. All right, let's keep going on. This is not complicated. Petitioner claims she has the bulk of the requested disclosure in her possession. So I'm compiling, with the help of some of you really loyal people, all, the full timeline of when she said she miscarried at which time. So what she said in January versus what she said in April versus what she said in March. I'm compiling all that first video tomorrow morning. Once the internet spends the time the internet does collecting all this information, we'll bring that to you guys to properly look at the evidence and where she may have lied or misremembered something so casual as in, you know, uh, the dates of her children uh, and or, you know, all the possible things that might have gone wrong with them. Corinne Bunderman, $25. Thank you so much. Rosalind, $2. This is the greatest shit show on earth. I hate to say I agree. Lynn with a 119 NOK. What is an NOK? What is NOK currency? I don't know what that is. N O K. Uh, oh, Norwegian. Oh, thank you so much. Let's do this. Um, 119 Norwegian. Let's switch that around. Oh, get out of there with that. So how much is 119? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, one crone. Uh, so wait, one, one, oh, no, 109, 109, right? What's that? 119. Well, someone tell me this 119. It equals 10 bucks. Thank you so much for the 10 Norwegian dollars over there. We appreciate you. Uh, Go Socialism, hooking us up. Brenda with a $5 super chat. During the eclipse, I told you my daughter was due April 4th. She finally gave birth today. Congratulations, Brenda, on your daughter's birth. How exciting. Thank you so much for all that love out there. And we're going to share it right back with you. Wild stuff. Um, it's... Uh, da -da -da. 
Uh, let's see what's going on here. I'm getting a lot of comments from you guys, but I want to keep on this. I want to keep going with this. Again, I'm sure on Umbrella's chat, there's going to be a lot more. Elaine with a $5 super chat. This is for Boone. Don't want him to feel left out. Thank you for that, Boone. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll share that with Boone. Boots on the ground, $20. Take Tasha for the pre-birth pedicure. Oh, it's we're doing the pre-birth pedicure. Don't you worry. Um, okay. So now she claims to have miscarried in July. Okay. Again, my th- I'm not saying this is right, but my thought is she now claims she has photos from July, which, by the way, it could just be her having a period. If she's claiming to have miscarried in July, I'm not an expert, but I think it would be hard to tell from a photo the difference between a miscarriage and a period. I'd love to know your thoughts. I say that with respect. I am sorry to even be entering into this conversation. $10 from David Woodmancy. I uh, said, great working, Dave. Would using this July date help her justify the moon bump in October? November court date, uh, where she was wasn't uh, w- uh, wanted to show that she was pregnant. This is just crazy, crazy indeed, crazy indeed. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't speak towards the moon bump. The moon bump in November or October, whatever the hell it was, she looked ready to. She looked in her third trimester. She looked like it was a third trimester. Kaylor said, "So she miscarried in July, but filed this case in August." Come on. I hear you. Specifically, petitioner through counsel stated in emails that he had the photos of the fetuses, the contact information for the telehealth provider, and the communications between petitioner and her sister, whom we're calling everybody. Um, wait, what, uh, what What was this name for the sister? Um, hey, sister, doe, sister. All right. Uh, requested a response to motion to compel. Let me speak with Jane about the request for the photo of the sacks. Hate that word. She told me she had this photo available, and if she does, then I'll immediately provide it to you today. Same with the name of the health provider. Having said all that, I just got off the phone with Janie Dodo Bird, and she is sending me the sack photo in the name of the telehealth person. I want to see Clayton's sack photo. No, I'm kidding. All right. As promised, I have talked to Jane about the fetal sack photos and she has, hold on. So which, all right. So next day, and she has produced copies of those photos to me. I have them in my possession right now. I am prepared to disclose these to you along with some additional information. Jane found additional information showing a cons- consult with a healthcare provider at the time the fetal sacks were discharged or whatever you call it. That was March 28th, April 8th. As I mentioned before, I have the photos you want to see. I understand you want to give them to your experts. Greg, that is not going to be a problem. You're going to love the image dates because the images are dated July 23rd, 2023. I also have the text messages between Jane and her sister dated July 23rd, 2023. I do have some telehealth info showing Jane seeking medical advice on July 23rd, 2023. I don't think that is helpful to either party, but it is something I'm willing to disclose. Instead of just simply complying with Rule 49 and disclosing the information he acknowledges having, counsel bombarded Bard's respondent's attorney in his attorney's office. Notice, notably, if the photos were from July 2023, as current counsel is now claiming, but not disclosing, then every filing after that date is per se a violation of Rule 26 and the testimony at the deposition in the protective orders proceedings were all perjury, perjur, perjurious, perjurious. Staff with communications and comments about personal sanctions against attorneys and suggesting that the state bar needs to be involved. Petitioner having already filed two complaints dismissed and at least two others against her prior attorneys also dismissed. Yes, that's right. Multiple complaints against multiple attorneys. Hello, 1,300 people. Here's what I, here's what I want to tell you now that we have you for a minute. Tomorrow, we will be doing an extensive Patreon live stream. Is tomorrow Friday already? Can you believe this? An extensive Patreon live stream. We are working overtime to make sure we get all of this information to you. So if you join me at patreon.com slash Dave Neal, you can be a part of the community. We got all the chats. You can come in here and you can get a spawn scum avatar. You can do all that stuff with us. We appreciate everyone who's become a member. And um, here we have somebody actually showing me their monster energy drink where it says uh monster energy it says uh, don't drink if you're pregnant it says it somewhere i don't know where it is anyway let's keep going so you can join our community patreon.com slash dave neal you can actually join for free you're not going to get that live stream but if you join for free you'll get updates when i have big breaking news stories like this one kayler said if she miscarried in july why did she file this case in august again i'm not 
I'm I'm looking at this wondering why. My guess is she took those took those photos and she's claiming she didn't know it was a miscarriage until later on. Which by the way is the perfect defense that she can claim. It's the only defense. It it doesn't make it right. All right. April 3rd, 2024, at 11.20 a.m. Jesus, man, seriously? I mean, seriously, does Clayton mean that much to you? I, I'm guessing this is um, what he said, her lawyer said. So look, I guess what is going to happen next is you can submit your proposed order on the MTC to the court. I will respond and object to the order, and I will probably have to file a motion asking for relief on the basis of fraud by you. This stuff is going to be messy, like really messy. If you won't agree to do something remedial, I need to be clear about what happens next. I am going to file something explaining this crap to the judge, and I'm going to ask her to make a referral to the state bar, and that applies to both you and to Isabel. So he said he never threatened or he said he never filed any complaints but this is this is a threat to file a complaint isabel now knows that you have lied to the court multiple times she cannot sit back and allow this to continue i don't care if she's new and i don't care if she hasn't signed any pleadings that is irrelevant isabel cannot stick her head in the sand she has an absolute duty to report professional misconduct she also has an absolute duty to help you violate the rules to not help you violate the rules if isabel sits back and lets this go further off the rails without taking appropriate remedial steps she is putting her own license in peril. $10 super chat from KC Cat for all the women in here who have suffered the terrible tragedy of miscarriage, even multiple miscarriages, and listening to this bitch's lies. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate the super chat. And um, also, yes, um, I tip my hat to anyone who has overcome such what I can imagine would be just trying, trying times. Willis Sum Juno's $20 uh, says, uh, you are amazing. Well, thank you so much for that. I'm just making sure I'm getting these super chats in. I don't know if I missed any. Uh, we have so many people in the chat right now. It's hard to cover it all. Stephanie with $20. Thank you for what you're doing on the case. To second another comment, a lot of other people would have moved on by now. I'll always support some podcaster over here. Got your back. Love your content. Her words don't add up. Guys, thank you. Thank you, not just for the super chats, but for your time and your positivity and everything that's come along with this. Yes. We've been covering this case literally for a long, long time. And I've been blessed with the gift of disassociation so I can continue to share the love with my family that they so much deserve and try to put some of this behind me. Uh, you've helped donate to my legal funds that have helped me keep a lawyer who can go through all the muck so I can continue just trying to do my job. We have two more minutes. We're going to cover this. Um, as a compromise, I offer this proposal. Don't apply for fees right now. In return for you not seeking fees right now, I will agree not to bring a motion asking for relief. I mean, this to me feels like extortion. I know it's not because it's it's just like, um, so. Th this is like the, the Trump school of uh, um, negotiating, right? He goes so hard, threatens, threatens, um, threatens, uh, Greg and Isabel, both lawyers at Woodnick Law, and then he says, "Now let's do this. I won't, I won't mess with your licenses. Just drop the, drop the fees. Let's get over this." It's just wild stuff, guys. Um, just the super chats keep coming in, so I'm having a hard time getting any further. Um, I wanted to make sure I caught all of them. Tiffany with a $5 super chest said, thank you for your work in reporting this case. Thank you so much. Let's just finish this up. Petitioner's motion is also misleading. The parties are communicating over email and respondent is responding where appropriate. Undersigned has no ethical or legal obligation to expose himself to unnecessary criticism that is not conducive to resolution. While petitioner's counsel did eventually apologize for his toxic comments, the online activity continues and the toothpaste is out of the tube. Undersigned counsel realizes that filing this objection and bringing this above men mentioned to the court will likely escalate petitioner's tactics, but believes it is relevant for the court to have all the information when considering petitioner's motion to compel lunch. All right, well, let's do, let's, let's see if, um, let's see if they're going yet. If they're going, when they start going, um, I will stop my live stream. How about that? So um, when Tug, I'll, I'll leave this on. So when Tug starts, I'll stop. Uh, maybe I'll just leave this right over here so I can see it. And then let's keep going here. 
Uh, this is not a complicated case, contrary to what Petitioner promotes. Trial already continued once due to the same lack of disclosure is in June, and respondent is pro prepared to proceed and argue appropriate in in inferences consistent with the data set and lack thereof, and the court can enter relief as deemed appropriate. Respondent is entitled to his reasonable attorney's costs and fees in responding to this motion. Petitioner has been forced to incur significant fees due to respondent's continued efforts to avoid resolving her perjurious statements in these proceedings. There is nothing to be resolved without the disclosure respondent has already spent significant time attempting to gain access to, which has repeatedly been met with petitioner's overt uh, efforts to avoid the same. Did I read that right? Petitioner has been forced to incur... I think it was supposed to be the other way around. Clayton's the respondent. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Wherefore, respondent respectfully requests the court deny petitioner's motion for lunch, grant respondent leave to file a China doll affidavit for his reasonable attorney's fees, Enter appropriate sanctions and other relief as the court deems proper. Signed, Woodnick. And I'm guessing we have a signature from Clayton. So here we have um, from Greg. I did hear Lexi move to Texas with her husband, who clerked for me moons ago. Billy T will know what is going on at that office if you are giving a bounce back from the Lexi's email. Uh, Corey went out on his own during his short tenure. He responds quickly, but his paralegal is wonderful and super on top of things, so you might want to copy her if you're emailing. We object to any extension. It is not you. You are just the umpteenth attorney in the umpteenth who thinks they can get this resolved, only to be fired or need to withdraw for ethical reasons. I appreciate and am really respecting your cautious approach not to step in dog shit, but disclosing the date of the alleged miscarriage is not something that requires Jane getting a continuance, and we will object to the same. I need a napkin. Hold on. I'm going to use my tax papers here. Seeing if we got any other... Um, I'm surprised that Umbrella hasn't started yet. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Giving us the picture and timestamp for our forensic technology expert, Brian Neumeister, when there is already admission of records fraud in a trial in two months is also not something that requires a delay. And as we said before, we will address the photo if it is complemented by the alleged verifiable metadata and medical records. Jane claims she deleted the picture from her iPhone, claimed her sister deleted too, but also claimed she sent it to the telemed provider. There should be a very clear digital footprint for Neumeister, and a picture of a picture is not going to cut it in light of the history. We also are awaiting the original sonogram she claims she got anonymously from PPH, Planned Parenthood, which has affirmed it does not offer an anonymous appointments and that is has an easily accessible patient portal. This was the sonogram she admitted she doctored, and that is the core of our motion for relief under the OOP case number all right we continue we keep going sabine with a two dollar super chat greg winnick voice she lied Bye, loser. oh wrong one <laughs> that, that works too all right there it is she lied all right i'll play the button julie says his intro is 20 minutes so i'm good he runs late all right we'll keep going thank you sabine i appreciate that i want to make sure i didn't miss anyone else there you guys are fantastic in the chat uh, we are at 1,300 people in the chat room. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, once this information makes it to the public, there will be way more uh, commentary as people poke holes in it all. There is already an order about the medical records. We have been through this with her failed motions and whatnot. We need that picture to give to doc doctors Dean and Justicia. Again, we are not interested in a picture of a picture. That is where the arts and crafts issue comes in. And notwithstanding, Jane invoked Rule 2. When you speak with Redacted and Redacted, they will confirm the fabricated documents and fake pregnancy alleged allegations were happening back in 2014. And since you saw she blamed Greg Gillespie... Okay, so we already saw some of that. Um, nice. All right, we keep on going. Thanks for all the kind words, guys. You guys are sweet. Um, yeah, keep hitting the like button. Our paralegal, Maribeth, will be sending you the deposition exhibits under separate cover. This has nothing to do with you. We've been involved in litigation with Jane since 2021. In this case, collateral proceedings since October, and her claims and delay tactics are exhausting. 
from the, from their lawyer, Greg and Isabel. Quick follow up on a few things. Per the attached email, I just learned that Jane's first attorney is no longer with the modern law firm. Unfortunately, her Arizona bar record still shows her working there, but apparently her LinkedIn has been updated to show that she has left Arizona and moved to Texas. Yuck. Based on this, it sounds like getting a copy of the file from Alexis may be a challenge. As you will note, her firm claims that a copy of the file was given to Jane, but Jane says this isn't true. In any case, that issue will need to be resolved one way or another. Um, since I don't have the information I need yet, I'm going to file a motion asking the court for more time to respond to the motion to compel. Uh, as promised, I've talked to Jane about the fetal sack photos, and she has produced copies of those photos to me. What does that mean, copies of the photos? I And by the way, none of this was shared with me. None of this. You know, you could share the photos with me and ask me not to report on them. I could tell you what I think. I'm no expert. Ah. <sighs> Justice for Lexi. Yeah, that's right. Lexi, of course, suing. Is this it here? Lexi Lindvall, as we find out yesterday, suing former firm for termination while seeking postpartum depression treatment. Um, this came out yesterday. Plaintiff Alexi Lindvall filed the complaint Friday for an unlawful pregnancy discrimination, sex discrimination, disability discrimination, and retaliation in the U.S. District Court. Let me say this. If any of what Lexi Linval alleges is true, I hope she gets the bag. I hope Lexi gets a pretty penny. High six figures, seven figures, go after them if what you're saying is true. Go, Lexi, go. Yeah, we're not a spiteful bunch. Lexi represented, and by the way, we loved Lexi Linval. We did. I, I, I kind of felt like we had a little bond going on from the beginning. Um, that being, she's a Bachelor fan. It's like, she must watch one of our videos. You know what's happening? Layla with a super chat, $10. Thank you for your integrity and dedication to fairness, justice, and the truth. Well, thank you so much. Um, uh, Scorpion said, do we want to maybe make a poll on when current lawyer filed motions to withdraw? To be quite honest, I don't know how to make a poll. Um, but um, either way, let's keep, the, uh, let's keep the party going. And thanks for all the love, Layla and everyone else. Appreciate you guys. You've all but made up for the demonetized video this morning. Um, so anyway, let's go back here. Jane is concerned about these photos being publicly released. And she has asked me to request that you agree to a protective order as to them. Why would you, why would you care? This is, this is how it works, right? Um, so he says, we have copies of the fetal sack photos, which again, I don't know what the hell. I'm not saying they should be released publicly, but I would definitely want multiple experts looking at them to see what the hell might be going on. Um, Mag in Florida said, what's the date she conceived the tonsil twins? I think it would have been... May 20th or thereabouts. Um, I've, he says, I've spent several hours today reading through all the pleadings on the docket. Hold on. They're about to go live. Okay. So there it is. Um, I'm stopping as soon as you do. It'll forward. I'm stopping now. All right. I'm ending here. Here's how it's going to work. Thank you guys. Uh, token wanted to know why the previous video was demonetized. I don't know. Sometimes when you talk about tough things, they get demonetized. Here's how it's going to work. I'm leaving here. You can head over and watch my coverage along with, uh, umbrella guy and Megan Fox. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely bonkers. That's beginning right now. Again, thank you so much for all of the support. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, for following on Instagram. We'll be live tomorrow sometime late morning on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. KW said she cannot claim she didn't know she miscarried if she saw the sex and had photos of them in July and, and especially didn't go to the doctor afterwards. Yet in October, and November, she showed off a baby bump, which we should not, which she should not have. I agree. Patty Joe with $10 says therapy, coffee, breadsticks, whatever else helps you fund. Patty, thank you. I, I will do therapy by drinking coffee. Coffee is my therapy and diet Dr. Pepper. So thank you so much for that. 
Um, you guys were really uh, on top of it today. And yes, we're going to be tugging along. Um, jo I'm joining Tug literally right now. Again, just want to give you guys all of my thanks. Um, uh, thank you, Amy, for sharing the Venmo. Uh, Anna said, where can we watch? As soon as I end this live, it's going to take you to this live right here. And you're going to see this live right here. Um, I will place it. Actually, why don't we do this? I'm going to place it in the chat right here so you guys can actually get a get a chance to see it. Um, I think I've, I think I can place it this way. So just give me one second here. I'm placing it in the chat. I'm going to pin it and you can go there. And also patreon.com slash Dave Neal is the place you can donate if you would like to. Thank you so much uh, to everybody who's been here. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the alerts. We will be back first thing in the morning uh, because we will have a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. And again, that's going to be it from me. This one was wild. All right. Tug is live. I'm out. I'll see you over there. Um, by the way, if you do come into Tug's chat, just um, give big boy some love over there. Big boy. Uh, power journalist Dave Neal, five dollar super chat from K Rab. Uh, is the Amazon wish list at the Dave Neal fronts for May yours? Um, yes. Thank you so much for all the love, everybody. I'll talk to you guys all in a minute over at the Umbrella Guy. Bye now.